Thank you for the nice introduction and of course for the invitation. I maybe should add that as far as my experience with Africa is concerned, I'm a little bit of a late comer because um, I was working for the Humboldt Foundation since 2009. But when I took over the position as head of Division Africa Middle East um, right three years ago, I must say I had never been to Africa before. So um, in, within these three years, I undertook many um, journeys to Africa and I get more and more connected, of course, with Africa, but also more and more impressed. So um, thank you very much um, for inviting me to this, to this symposium. So um, the aim of this exciting symposium is to highlight best practices of cultural diplomacy in Africa. And of course, now I also will present to you some, a case of best practice in such cultural diplomacy with Africa. In the conference concept I was sent, some achievements of cultural diplomacy are given, such as strengthening trust between cultures, improving communication and cooperation, or reducing, re reducing socio-cultural conflicts. I must say that I very much agree with this understanding of cultural diplomacy. And the excellent program of the symposium, um, which was going on since Wednesday, is mapping, in fact, the phenomenon of cultural diplomacy in its many shapes. What I was missing at first glance when I received the program draft was the role of science and research. I should add that whenever I'm talking of science and research in my speech, I use the term of science in a holistic understanding. This means the concept of science, as the Humboldt Foundation understands and uses it, is a holistic one, comprising the so-called hard sciences as well as the so-called soft sciences. This means technical and natural sciences, of course, but humanities and social sciences as well. In fact, research on culture, as delivered by the humanities, is an integral contribution to our understanding of the world and thus to science as well. Well, I said I miss at first glance in the program some topics dedicated to the role of science and research in cultural diplomacy and especially with Africa. But at second glance, it became clearer to me that in many of the given topics of the conference, science, in my holistic understanding, has an intrinsic part. Let me just give two examples. First, the question of African identity. In humanities and social sciences, this is a cutting edge research area, including questions on current developments as well as on, as well as on those lying in history. Second, science and research are closely related to the big current challenges Africa is facing. This is um, today's topic during the conference. So achieving improvements in fields such as health, agriculture, sanitation, economy, education, and so on, will be able to reduce conflicts and reasons for forced migration. And these um, results will largely depend on progress in science and research as well. So after all, science and research are not absent in the program of the symposium, however, a little bit in disguise. And what I would like to do in my speech is to make science and research more visible in their meaning for cultural diplomacy. So I will thus explain the concept of cultural diplomacy as the Humboldt Foundation understands it. I also will share with you some thoughts about the role of cultural diplomacy within the relationships between Africa and Europe. Cultural diplomacy in the understanding of the Humboldt Foundation is closely and inseparably linked with the idea of a diplomacy of science. For explaining to you these important principles, I have to go back to the founding history of the Humboldt Foundation, and I also have to tell you about our work and core activities. So um, when the Humboldt Foundation was created in 1953, our task was just the same as it is today. We grant research fellowships and research awards to highly qualified researchers holding a PhD from all over the world. 
There are no quota for countries of origin or for disciplines. The excellence of the researchers is our only selection criterion. We have indeed a very special interest in sponsoring not only scientists from industrialized countries with very strong research infrastructures, but we are also very interested in sponsoring talented researchers from developing and threshold countries. For this reason, we created special programs for developing and emerging countries. With all of our sponsorship programs, we enable researchers to spend extended research stays of up to 24 months in Germany. There, they are working on independent research projects at universities or research institutions with their German colleagues. And after the initial research stay and after the return of the researchers to their home countries, we keep um, close contact with our alumni and we go on supporting them for an academic lifetime in keeping good academic relations with their cooperative partners in Germany. By the way, more than 90% of researchers from Africa we sponsor return to their home countries after the research stay in Germany and they stay there. So this means we are enhancing brain circulation and not at all brain drain. We call the researchers we sponsor Humboldtians and our motto is once a Humboldtian, always a Humboldtian. So we go on sponsoring the scientists we once selected during an academic lifetime. We strongly believe that the sponsorship of individuals is an important contribution to cultural diplomacy and I will you explain why. So over the years, um, a worldwide network of about 28,000 scientists, once sponsored by the Humboldt Foundation, in about 140 40 countries worldwide has grown. This is the so-called Humboldt Network. If you have a look on this map and on the numbers, you will of course recognize that the number of Humboldtians in Africa is smaller than in other parts of the world. In Sub-Saharan Africa at the moment, we count 617 Humboldtians. The reasons for this are manifold. In the very first place, African researchers found their way to the Humboldt Foundation later than researchers from Europe or America. When the Humboldt Foundation was created in 1953, the university and research systems in most African countries were still at their very beginning. And only from the late 1980s or 1990s onwards, we were able to sponsor researchers from Africa in a critical number. So the Humboldt network in Africa is still smaller than in other parts of the world at the moment, but it keeps growing because we get very, very good applications from many African countries. There are, of course, exceptions to that history I told you. For example, in the late 1950s, Neville Alexander, linguist and important political companion of Nelson Mandela, became a Humboldtian. And he spent several research days in Germany at the University of Tübingen. Shortly after his return to South Africa in the early 1960s, he was arrested and condemned to long years of imprisonment on Robben Island. But even during this terrible period of his life, he kept contact with the Humboldt Foundation. The Humboldt Foundation, for example, helped him in financing legal assistance, and a collaborator of the Humboldt Foundation was once even able to visit him in prison. And after his release from prison, the Humboldt Foundation supported again Neville Alexander's research stays in Germany. So um, this case of Neville Alexander is a striking example of what cult cultural diplomacy, even under the least favorable political conditions or circumstances, can do. So since the very beginning of its existence, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation has played its part in cross-border cultural and scientific diplomacy. Remember, in 1953, when the foundation was established by the German government, Europe was divided by the so-called Iron Curtain. 
The Cold War dominated international politics and often people's minds as well. And under these conditions, the Humboldt Foundation started to build bridges between people, between scientists from different countries. During the long years of the Cold War, many researchers from the countries behind the Iron Curtain came to the Federal Republic of Germany with a fellowship from the Humboldt Foundation. After German reunification and after the fall of the Iron Curtain, many of these Humboldtians in Eastern countries were changing from science to politics and contributed a lot to restructuring their countries after the communist era. At present, however, it looks as if the European integration would be called into question, as if the basic values of European coexistence, such as freedom, tolerance, and openness, were not guaranteed anymore everywhere. This shows that the great work of cultural diplomacy can never be considered as finished, in Europe as little as elsewhere. Fortunately, under the current difficult circumstances in Europe, we at the Humboldt Foundation observe again that researchers are at the very forefront of those who are passionately defending the openness of European societies. So it is our mission to build bridges with and for science and research. We promote the development and maintenance of academic networks between Germany and the rest of the world, acknowledging the strong relationship between diplomacy and science, which also connects us closely, for example, with the Federal Foreign Office here in Berlin, our, one of our important public funders. Our understanding of cultural diplomacy could thus be defined as cultural diplomacy through science and research cooperation. So I already mentioned that our worldwide Humboldt network comprises 28,000 researchers all over the world. And this Humboldt network really lives. A survey on this network established in 2015 proved that Humboldtians are most actively working together worldwide. And Humboldtians in Africa are among the most active networkers. They have built up sustainable connections within Africa and beyond. And through this intensive international networking, the benefit of cultural diplomacy through science between Africa and Germany is widely extended. Humboldtians from Africa, for example, are using our alumni sp sponsorship instruments for organizing conferences, assembling participants from many other African countries. We call these conferences Humboldt Colleagues, and in 2016 and 2017 alone, 20 of such Humboldt Colleagues were organized throughout Africa, with altogether more than 2,000 participants. Another example. We offer Humboldtians from Africa the option to build research groups with German partners. Currently, 24 of such research groups are working in various African countries. Next to Humboldtians and their German colleagues, many junior researchers from Africa are integrated and so get into contact with international research cooperation at a very early stage of their education or career. And in fact, a very crucial element of networking among Humboldtians consists in offering mentorship for younger researchers. This is one of the reasons why we describe our alumni as multipliers or bridge builders. Humboldtians share the cultural and academic experience they made during the sponsorship period they spent in Germany, and in doing this, they automatically share their networks. They are widening horizons and are showing perspectives to their young mentees. As mentors, our Humboldtians are preparing the academic future of the younger generation and at the same time the future of our worldwide Humboldt network. This means with our sponsorship and networking activities, we enable researchers to build up sustainable cooperation as well as personal relationships. Both are shared with the next generation of young researchers. This is the added value of our networking and a most important contribution to our cultural diplomacy through science. Let me just summarize the essential elements of this cultural diplomacy through science. 
So it is knowledge, knowledge, knowledge exchange, mutual learning and cooperation at eye level instead of just unilateral knowledge transfer. Scientists are mentors for the next generation of researchers and scientists. Scientists are also ambassadors of their countries and bridge builders for scientific and cultural exchange with Germany and the world. Elements of this understanding can partly be found in a broader political understanding of cultural diplomacy. We follow these developments closely at the Humboldt Foundation because for us um, the challenge consists in constantly scrutinizing the topicality of our understanding of cultural diplomacy and diplomacy of science and research. Right at the moment, terms of cultural diplomacy are widely discussed and used in politics. I already mentioned the current crisis of European identity. Without a doubt, this is also a crisis of Europe's role within a globalizing world. And it is a crisis of Europe's relations with developing countries. In the very first place, those in Europe's closest neighborhood, such as Africa. The term of European crisis has often replaced recently by the term of the so-called refugee crisis. At the moment, in Germany at least, at the very forefront are still refugees from the Middle East. The far greatest part of refugees are still coming from Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan. But the number of people from African countries searching to reach Europe keeps growing. And this has given European-African relations greater attention in international politics, which is also important for the Humboldt Foundation, of course. One of the strategies coming out of this new interest in Africa in Germany is the so-called Marshall Plan with Africa, launched by the German Federal Ministry of Economics and Economic Cooperation and Development. We have already heard about this Marshall Plan this morning. It has often been said, of course, that the term of Marshall Plan is not so very much appropriate. As a historian by education, I fully share this opinion. In the very first place, Africa has not lost the war against Europe. The initial, the initial original Marshall Plan initiated by the United States after World War II to a great extent was a program of reconstruction of big industrial structures destroyed by war. This concept, of course, cannot easily be transferred to the current situation of African countries. In most countries, it is not all about reconstructing any pre-existing industries, but the challenge is to support existing local economic structures and to enable the creation of others. Still, the goal of concluding a pact between Africa and Europe can be promising. It is the term with in the Marshall Plan with Africa which seems most interesting um, to me and gives me some hope. Of course, um, this Marshall Plan is very comprehensive, including fields of activity such as economy, environment, education, etc. But of course, all of these phenomena are, phenomena are closely interlinked with each other and it is high time to become aware of it. So without denying the weak points of the Marshall Plan with Africa, I think um, that its basic idea of strengthening cooperation between Africa and Germany and Europe could be a promising contribution to a cultural diplomacy on a broader political scale. Nevertheless, the Humboldt Foundation does not share all of the positions given in the Marshall Plan with Africa. Just to give one example, the Marshall Plan states that in the future there should be in the very first place cooperation with so-called reform-oriented countries which have, I quote from the plan, countries which have proven their will to reform above all by ensuring reliability, the rule of law and the political participation of all of their citizens, end of quote. So for the Humboldt Foundation this would not be an option at all. We will go on sponsoring the best researchers from all African countries. Exclude some countries for political reasons would mean to punish researchers from these countries for the mistakes of their political leaders. 
But we are convinced that individuals we sponsor are able to inspire their countries in a positive way and that they are able to change opinions and maybe one day even structures and systems. Activities of African Humboldt alumni and the countries clearly prove that the Humboldt Foundation's understanding of sponsorship and cultural diplomacy can be successful. I already mentioned their important role as scientific mentors, bridge builders between Germany and the African countries, and as multipliers in science and society. In Africa, Humboldtians even did more. Together with German partners in 2011, Humboldtians from Sub-Saharan Africa created a network and named it the African-German Network of Excellence in Science, or short ARCNES. To date, ARCNES has grown into a network with 300 African members. On this slide, you can see the current governing board of ARCNES, Dr. Heather Marco from Cape Town University, South Africa, Professor Jens Gebauer from Germany, he is most connected to Africa in science and research, and Professor Odunaye Adeboye from Ojun State University in Nigeria. So um, the founder members of Agnes, there were 21 in 2011. Now there are more than 300 members. The founder, founder members had three things in common. First, they were passionate about the state of affairs in sub-Saharan Africa, especially with a regard to higher education and research. Second, they all were alumni of the Humboldt Foundation. Third, they had retained scientific relations with Germany colleagues, often supported by the Humboldt Foundation. And the envisaged role of Agnes was in 2011 and still is to strengthen academic excellence in Sub-Saharan Africa by various measures. First, by promoting regional networking and professional exchange between excellent science within the region and Germany. Second, by introducing young African researchers to Germany as a quality research destinations via the Humboldt Foundation. Third, by promoting Africa as a research destination with many and unique research possibilities to highly qualified German scientists. And last but not least, by participating in ongoing discourse on expansion of scientific and academic capacities, also regarding the role of research and innovation for sustainable development in sub-Saharan Africa. Since 2011, Agnes has developed into a highly professional body that has created two sponsorship programs itself, the so-called Agnes Junior Research Grant for young postdocs and the Agnes Grant for intra-African research mobility for master students and doctoral students. So far, about 90 promising young research talent, talents were sponsored with these grants and were able to make the first step into the direction of international research mobility. Money for these programs comes from the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, the Humboldt Foundation and the World Academy of Science. But Agnes members are doing so much unpaid work in reviewing applications or in sitting on selection committee sessions. Without this commitment, the Agnes sponsorship programs could not exist. African Agnes members decided to dedicate a lot of time for giving support to junior researchers from many African countries. So in fact, nobody told African Humboldtians, please create such a network and, and, and use it for enhancing science and research in Africa and for giving something back to your countries. They just did it. They just were so much inspired by the idea of cultural diplomacy through science that they decided decided to create this network. The activity of Agnes, which is based on the brilliance and on the commitment of Humboldt alumni, proves in my eyes that the Humboldt Foundation has the right understanding of cultural diplomacy through science. So Agnes members and many other alumni in Africa are giving back to their countries what they got through the sponsorship of the Humboldt Foundation and the German state. They were able to start cooperation at eye level with German colleagues and to maintain these contacts during their whole lifetime. 
In their African home countries, Humboldt alumni are sharing knowledge and networks with the next generation of scientists. They become bridge builders between countries and ambassadors for international scientific exchange. At the Humboldt Foundation, we strongly believe that cultural diplomacy through science, as I try to explain in my speech, will have its share in the solution of Africa's great challenges. Thank you. Thank you.